And then verse 11 says, Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. He succeeded. Prayer. Yeah, and it says that in Mark for a season. Oh, he kept coming back. He going to quit. But he defeated him in that encounter. He defeated him in every encounter. Yeah. Prayer. Now, we're talking about a prayer that goes beyond the quickly mumbled prayers over daily concerns. We're talking about the kind of prayer that finds you alone uh, in a place that you've chosen, a place that is a place where you can be, also they often refer to as a prayer closet, or wherever, the, but where you go for to spend time Time that's measured in hours, not in minutes. Deeply imploring God for his help, for his blessings, for his guidance, for his power. That's as foreign to the lay of the sea in Christianity of today. They have no grasp of it. Most have never participated in spending that kind of time alone with God in prayer. And so they don't know the power that comes from it either. Fasting. Well, in this Supersized <laughs> nation, overfed nation in which we live, where three meals a day with four snacks uh, in between them uh, is considered not only normal and acceptable but necessary. Uh, it, it, it's a battle just to skip a meal in a day, let alone fasting for a day. 40 days? Come on, 40 hours is a trial <laughs> for most yeah. people to go without food. That would be considered a grand sacrifice. What is the purpose of fasting? Exhibiting to God your willingness to sacrifice mortal need for spiritual power. To purposefully force the flesh into subjection before facing spiritual combat. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? So, you know, the flesh is going to say, oh, well, you know, why, why would I want to help him in a spiritual battle? If he loses the spiritual battle, maybe I can pray. And it's to focus yourself on the true priorities of your Christian walk so as not to be distracted by the mortal and by the temporal. I mean, once you're translated, you're not going to have that battle. You, know, you don't have to eat. You don't have to drink. You don't have to sleep. <laughs> you don't have to have any of those things. You can partake in them, but they aren't things. Now, right now, yeah, the flesh, you know, you, you can go without eating for 40 days and live. You may not believe it. You can go 40 days without food and live. Uh, that, that's a simple fact. And you probably can't go more than three days without water and live. Okay. But you could go without eating 40 days. I'm not saying that you fast for 40 I've never <laughs> fasted for 40 days, I'll be honest. I never have. Uh, but it is possible. It is humanly possible to do. The thing is, right now, okay, yeah, you do need to maintain this flesh. 
thing. But that doesn't mean that the flesh should have what it wants every time it wants it. Okay. Uh, you feed it sufficient for it to run and work properly. You give it sufficient fluid. Okay. For the same reason. It's not about its appetites, the things it wants. It's about what it needs. That's why the Lord says, I will provide all of your daily needs, not the wants. Because there's the needs of the mortal flesh to keep it going, keep it healthy, uh, to serve the Lord. But you need spiritual things. Those are the needful things. And those are far more needful than the things of the flesh. You know, again, Christ said, if you had faith as the grain of a mustard seed, we need that kind of faith. If you'd have had that much faith, you could have defeated this devil. But you doubt it. He didn't come out easy. Okay. He didn't back down easy. Well, when you get into spiritual battles, they're not going to be easy. And if you haven't already confronted and defeated your flesh and confronted and defeated the world, okay, you do not want to get into a spiritual battle. You know, like the old saying, you know, you showed up to, you know, and you brought a knife to a gunfight. Uh, you don't want to do that. Because you are expected to be soldiers of Jesus Christ. Therefore, you are expected to confront the enemy. And you are expected to win. That's the whole point behind soldiers and armies. To confront the enemy and to win. Doesn't do any good if they stay in the rear, you know, or they decide to just be spectators and not get involved in the fight. You are expected to engage in that warfare. And our warfare is not against flesh and blood. So therefore, the subduing of the flesh and being aloof to the world, Christ says, that's not your war. That, that's not even that's not even a fight, he said. <laughs> That's not even warfare there. You, you're, you're not even in the arena of warfare until you're engaging in spiritual warfare. And as I said a few minutes ago, the vast majority of today's Laodicean Christianity hasn't even conquered this thing. So no wonder this world's going to hell in a handbasket. The devil has no opposition. We're expected to be soldiers of Jesus Christ, fully capable of sustained spiritual combat. Uh, and if you haven't conquered the flesh of the world, you can't do that. You can't do that, and you are failing as a soldier of Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. The spiritual enemies that you are going to face are not all going to be equal. They're not going to be equal in strength. They're not going to be equal in ability and power. But you need to be prepared in advance for any possibility. You don't wait until you find yourself engaged <laughs> with an enemy. Hang on one minute, please. Mm -hmm. That's not okay. You go prepared. 
Okay. You need to be proactive and not reactive in your Christianity. So, who, who do you prepare to face? The top dog. <laughs> that way it don't matter who comes along, okay? Uh, they, and unless you're facing Satan, and let me tell you, there's been very few, very few Christians in the history of the Church of Jesus Christ who have gone up head to head with the devil himself. Very few. Uh, I mean, I don't even know if I can think of anybody even in my lifetime that I would dare say face the devil himself. Some, some devils? Oh yeah. Some strong ones? Yeah. Satan himself? Man, that would be a rarity. You know? Uh, but eventually, you know, if someone's serving the Lord like they should, I don't know why, George Mueller's name keeps coming to me. George Mueller went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil. Again and again. No question about that. Now you read the life of George Mueller, you don't know that. Now you wait until you face the one that's too strong for you, you're in trouble. Don't wait. So that means being proactive. That means being prepared now. Will you? Well, is your flesh conquered and defeated? That's the first one. Is the world conquer and defeated? That's the next one. You're not even going to get up to the spiritual warfare until that's out of the way. Right? And again, the flesh ain't going to quit. The world's always going to be the world. So you better get that settled now. But if you're going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ in the capacity that is accepted, Expected of you, you need to be engaging in spiritual warfare. And you cannot do that until those are out of the way. And then once you are at that point, you better say, okay, I better be ready for whatever is likely to come along. I mean, that's the way you know, I was when we were in the military. You know, uh, when I was on the, the uh, emergency services team, uh, anti-terrorist, anti-hijacking, we said, okay, what might we possibly come up against, you know, in this particular operation that we're going to? All right, we better take this, we better grab, let me fill my pockets with a few of these, hang a couple <laughs> extra, uh, we're going to, we don't, I may not ever, I'd rather have it and not have to use it. <laughs> Then the fun boy, I really wished I had grabbed that war rocket <laughs> on the way out of the armory, uh, you know. And that's how you've got to be with your spiritual warfare. You're ready for whatever comes. You know, if the apostles had been prepared, they could have taken care of that. Always be prepared for this time. Because you don't know when you're going to come up with them. Being prepared for this kind is the hallmark of a good and faithful soldier of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that we will take these truths to heart that will be serious about what we're doing. We're justly and rightly expected to be spiritual warriors. But if we haven't conquered the flesh and conquered the world, Lord, we're not even in the, in the, in the, the arena yet conquered. Well, I pray, Lord, that we would all get this settled in our hearts and our minds today. And be warriors for the Lord.
Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that I pray and ask this. Amen. Amen. Amen.